The surprising history of voting rights in the U.S. While voting would seem fundamental in a democracy, voting rights in the U.S. have long been contentious. The Constitution makes no stipulations concerning who can vote. Instead, it is left to the states to decide, and they have often tried, with varying degrees of success to limit voting. States initially allowed only a select few to cast a ballot, enacting property, tax, religion, gender, and race requirements. In the first presidential election, 1789, voters were almost all landowning white Protestant males. Movements to end various restrictions were subsequently mounted. In 1792 New Hampshire became the first state to remove its landowning requirement, though it took until 1856 for the last state, North Carolina, to drop property demands for white men. And while the Constitution decreed that no officeholder should be subjected to a religion test, various states continued to require one for voting until 1828, when Maryland allowed Jews to enter the ballot booth. By the 1860s white males largely enjoyed universal suffrage in the U.S. But while voting rights were expanding for some areas of the population, states began enacting laws that barred women, African Americans, Native Americans, and many immigrants from casting ballots. The New Jersey Constitution of 1776 gave voting rights to all inhabitants, and in the 1797 state legislative election, a number of women voted. However, the threat of a government of petticoats led the legislature to pass a law in 1807 that barred women from the polls. In 1821 New York amended its constitution to require black voters to own property worth an amount that effectively banned them from the ballot booth. Other examples of efforts to limit voting included the Chinese Exclusion Act 1882, which prevented Chinese immigrants from becoming citizens and thereby blocked them from the polls. After slavery ended, a campaign was launched to secure voting rights for African American men. This was seemingly fulfilled with the ratification of the 15th Amendment in 1870, which guaranteed the right to vote to all men, regardless of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. However, southern states subsequently suppressed the black vote through intimidation and various other measures, such as poll taxes and literacy tests. The latter often required perfect scores and were frequently designed to be confusing. In one Louisiana test, the person was told to write every other word in this first line and print every third word in the same line, original type smaller and first line ended at comma, but capitalize the fifth word that you write. Such efforts proved so effective that by the early 20th century, nearly all African Americans had been disenfranchised in the South. During this time, women were demanding the right to vote. The woman suffrage movement in the U.S. began in the early 19th century and was initially linked with anti-slavery efforts. Backed by formidable activists notably Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Lucretia Mott, Lucy Stone, and Susan B. Anthony, the movement slowly made progress. In 1890 Wyoming became the first state to adopt a constitution that granted women the right to vote, and by 1918 women had acquired equal suffrage with men in 15 states. However, it was realized that a constitutional amendment was needed, and in 1920 the 19th Amendment was ratified when Tennessee approved the measure by one vote, becoming the 36th state to pass it. The victory was ensured only after a 24-year-old legislator changed his previous vote at the request of his mother, who told him, to be a good boy. In the ensuing decades, other groups such as Native Americans 1957 gained universal suffrage. For African Americans, however, their vote continued to be suppressed. By the mid-1960s fewer than 7% of blacks were registered to vote in Mississippi. With the civil rights movement, efforts were renewed to enforce the rights of African American voters. In 1964 the 24th Amendment was adopted, prohibiting poll taxes in federal elections. The following year the Voting Rights Act was signed. The landmark legislation banned any effort to deny voting rights, such as literacy tests. In addition, Section 5 of the Act provided for federal approval of proposed changes to voting laws or procedures in jurisdictions that had been deemed by a formula set forth in Section 4 to have practiced racial discrimination. Sections 4 and 5 were repeatedly extended by Congress, but in 2013's Shelby County v. 
Holder, the Supreme Court struck down Section 4, thus making Section 5 unenforceable. A number of states previously governed by Section 5 subsequently implemented various new measures, such as stricter voter ID requirements and limited early voting. Many of the changes had the proclaimed purpose of preventing voter fraud, though critics alleged that they were intended to suppress voting. Legal challenges resulted in a number of the laws being ruled unconstitutional.